Hi, I'm DJ Sixsmith. You're watching The Sit Down. We got PBV with us, PBV. Paul Ben Victor. What's up, man? How are you going to call me PBV? Hey, why like not? Those, that's my nickname that's for right. like many years. Everybody like calls it. me PBV. How's everything going? It happens naturally, doesn't it? It does, PBV. yeah. yeah that's nice cool. and easy. All right. How are you? Great, great. Uh, wonderful, fabulous. Glad got a lot to be going on these days. A lot days. going on. Yeah, it's nice. I came in from LA a couple of days ago, and, and it's freezing here, <laughs> which is refreshing. For about 48 hours. Right, and then you're morning. like, get me the heck out of here. Get me out of here, okay. It's <laughs> nice, yeah. So let's talk about this movie here, Feast of Seven Fishes. What was it like putting it together? It was so exciting. I mean, I, I think it was about a year ago we, we did this. I get a call, and I just had to hear Joey, Joey Pantoliano was yeah, in it. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm in. So I love Joey, and, and uh, we played brothers, and then I, they needed uh, a slot for the other brother. I think they had, anyway, I called Ray Abruzzo, who's mm -hmm. a very, good, very, very dear friend of mine from The Sopranos. So we play brothers, older brothers, in this uh, little Italian family about, the, and it takes place about this, it's about this uh, wonderful Christmas Eve festive traditional dinner where they put together supposedly seven fishes, bacala, stuffed, uh, stuffed anchovies, shrimp, uh, you know, whiting, all these crazy oh, oysters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the movie was filled with all this food and these wonderful actors. So it's a celebration of Christmas Eve of this Italian tradition taking place in this little town in West Virginia. That's really cool. And at this yeah. point, you've worked with so many different people. So to have friendships with people and keep those going, but also to work with people in movies must be a really cool deal for you. It's great. It does. Every year that, you know, the uh, few more seeds sprout up, you <laughs> yeah. know, and you go, oh, wow, I haven't heard from that guy. And I haven't heard, you know, and then they call, you get this call and you're working with these people. Every set I go on. I was working on something a couple of weeks ago, and the guy said, you know, I was a, I was a PA on Tombstone, mm. and now he's got to be 50 years old, wow. but this is 25 years ago, yeah. however many years ago. I said, yeah, okay, that was, you know, <laughs> I mean, I literally see people <laughs> become grandparents since I've, kids say, you know, I grew up watching, you know, oh God, you know, <laughs> I still feel like a kid in a lot of ways, like I'm just starting out in some ways, sure. but I guess I've done this a while, yeah. Well, I think that's the cool thing about acting is that you can be doing it for 25, 30 years and still feel like a kid with brand new parts, brand new roles, like how does that work for you when you're jumping into a new project? It's, uh, it's so exciting. A couple of years ago, I started, well, a few years ago, I started going, you know, you go from the stage of like, I hope I get this next role, mm -hmm. am I going to get, you know, um, and then a few years ago, about 10 years ago, I'd say, I started going, who am I, who's picking me next? You know right. what I mean? So you st I started just going, like, rub my hands and go, who, what crazy world am I going to enter next? So um, that's what it feels like. I, I, you kind of get a sense after a few years, like, you're going to do another job. Mm -hmm. You know, us actors, right. we actors, I think have our insecure, crazy side. But... Um, yeah, I'm in a place now where I'm just looking forward to the next one and see what comes next. People always say, what was the greatest? What was your favorite role? I always go, the next one right. is my favorite yeah, one. Yeah, you just keep it going at that it's point. It's so exciting. It's like, you know, each when you, when you get that call, it's like winning. It feels like when you're a skier, I always feel like you, you go on that downhill and you look up for that number and you're, you know, you win that one. So mm. it's like a win. It's like a little medal each time you get that role. Because, well, you know, it's so competitive. It's oh, fun, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd say The Irishman is a big win when you think about your <laughs> career. How did you get that call? Um, wow. Uh, so I, 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 I'll go back a little bit. Sure. I sent a little self uh, audition. We call them selfies, mm -hmm. self tape to Scorsese, Mr. Martin Scorsese, for a series called Vinyl mm -hmm. a few years right. ago. Yeah, yeah which we did for HBO, um, sadly ended a little too soon, but uh, yes, I did that. And uh, from that, you know, so then I had a relationship with Scorsese, he knew me, and there was this tiny little part that, that popped up in The Irishman, and I got a call from Ellen Lewis, fabulous casting director, and it was like, uh, to, 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 to do The Irishman, yeah. Yeah, I'm remembering, yeah, first, yeah, that's how it happened to play Jake Gottlieb in The Irishman, a small mm. little um, role as a uh, real estate developer who bought the, um, the Dunes, the, Dune, the Dunes uh, Hotel, I think it was. You may have forgotten that already, yeah. So what was the best part of that experience for you? Well, vinyl and Irishman both, but it, it, it was incredible. I mean, it's, you, it's kind of, where do I start? Um, you know, you get on set, and uh, I'm there with Ray Romano, who I'd also done 
vinyl with That's vinyl right. was sort yeah, of yeah. vinyl was kind of like the offshoot getting you set here for Irishman with That's a couple right. different people. I think with 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 Ray as well. Mm -hmm. You know, his career, God knows where it's going to go now. Right. Dramatically yeah, from totally. his uh, comedic from his comedic roles. Uh, yeah. So he's going to be, I'm sure, very busy too. He's wonderful. God, he was so good in vinyl and he's terrific in Irishman. But anyway, we got on set and we, we're pinching each other. I mean, he's standing next to me going, okay. There's De Niro, there's Pacino. They just walked on set. And he, I'm going, you're Ray Romano. Chill out. He goes, you know what, Stan? This is freaking me out. These are the freaking guys. out. I'm like, I'm calming him down. <laughs> we both, though, we were, just, we were just trying to be cool. Just stay cool. Just stay cool. Just be cool. No, but it was great. Um, I don't mean to sound like that. But it was, it, we were, it was, it's a little nerve-wracking when, totally. when you stand yeah. across from these guys. You kind of need a day or two to, to settle in, you know, because they're your idols. You grew up with them, and here they are, your heroes. Working with them, I'd worked with De Niro, a uh, small scene in Grudge Match, mm, okay. with uh, Stallone and, and Kevin Hart. That was the first time, and you know it's it's shocking. You know, you watch these guys for decades, yeah, and there he is. You know, so that was a trip, and um, but it was great. Everybody was warm. Pacino was terrific. I had a nice scene with him. You know, him and Ray Romano and De Niro's and. and, the, and the background of that scene, observing. So it was trippy, but. I don't know where to begin, but Scorsese, mm -hmm. working with him as, uh, on his sets, are, um, it's unique. There's a certain tone, a certain respect that I've, that I've never experienced before. It's like being in a library, almost like a grand. It's quiet. It's, you, you know there's Academy Awards floating around in wardrobe, costumes, makeup, lighting. You know, the best of the best are there the best of the best. I mean, every little detail. You open a drawer and it's got period paper and files in there from the 1950s, wow. you know. It's like, just in case you need it. I mean, it's just creme de la creme. It's the best. And he, he he's uh, so generous with actors and, you know, just take whatever time you need. Let's work this. You need more time. Take as much time as you need. It's, it's just unbelievably caring, luxurious, uh, you know, humorous. Mm -hmm. It's got this uproarious laugh that just fills the space, and you, you feel this sense of uh, just comfort. But his direction is what I'm trying to get to. It's taken me 100 years to get there. Is he, he gave me this tiny, tiny little specific, take a tiny pause between that and that. Mm. And I... He probably doesn't even remember telling me this, but he took this tiniest little pause right there, and I did, and a little stutter, stammer happened. He went, got it, that's what I wanted. I was like, wow. It's like he, he uh, you know, had little puppet strings. You know, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. He's, it was special. He, he's just, he's the master. You know, I think that you describe it perfectly. He's in the details, and that's such a small moment of the film, but it represents a much larger picture and what he's all about yeah. with his projects. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. Yeah, it was, you know, it's, it, it hits you more later, mm -hmm. you know, when everybody goes, you worked with these guys, you worked with these guys, you know, congratulations. It's still hitting me that, yeah. you know, the, the size, the breadth of this movie is, it's, it's you know, globally. It's monstrous. Monstrous, yeah. yeah. So, wow. Uh, like a friend of mine was telling me that, do you realize you're in this movie, <laughs> this monster movie, this big movie? It's like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's, it, ha it hasn't, it, it's right, hasn't slowly soaked in yet. It's like a wave that keeps right. coming in, you know. Yeah, and then you remember little bits and pieces as you go along here. Because yeah. you were just in it, working, doing the thing, just and now the, you're a little separated from it. You're like, yeah, okay. and then you see it. Right. Uh, have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's, no. it's I, I got to see something. it in theory. It's yeah. extraordinary. It's beyond, like, you know, I'm not that good at explaining these things, but it's... It's a masterpiece. It's mm. quite good, yeah. And especially, too, since it's coming to Netflix, like, obviously, people will check it out all over, but it seems like it's one of those films to see in the theater to really appreciate just how grandiose the whole experience yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, my sister and brother-in-law, I think they're going to the, uh, I think it's the Bel Belasco mm -hmm. Theater on Broadway right around here, right. Uh, where it's playing for a month or so. I'm not going to get a chance to do that, but I'm looking forward to hearing about that experience, mm -hmm. seeing it in a, you know, a... Uh, this renowned historical Broadway theater, you know, so that that's going to be exciting. But yeah, it'd be great if you get a chance to see it on, on big screen. 
But these days, people have big screens in their house, sure. practically, and yeah, sound, yeah. And, you know. <laughs> it's pretty wild. It's going to be pretty have. exciting, no matter how, where you see it. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing it again. Did you just seen it once? I saw it just the one time, okay. yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So thinking about your career, you've done a bunch of different things. When I think about TV, the last 20 years, The Wire is a big show that pops out. Mm -hmm. What was the best part of that experience for you? Uh, again, afterwards, you know, you show up, uh, you do the job. Um, a couple of years goes by. It was not. It, uh, it was not received. It was. It, it was critically mm -hmm. acclaimed. Huge at the time, but it wasn't until a few years later uh, that it started. You know, to have this ripple effect th everywhere. So uh, it, and it still does. Every year, there's a new crop of, mm -hmm. of fans, audience that 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 latches onto it and finds it and goes, "Oh my God! I just finished second season." Recently, I mean, every week somebody goes, "I just rewatched it." So it's been that's been probably the most significant, you know, project that I've been a part of for you know the past few decades, because it, it stays alive mm -hmm. as one of the best shows ever. They say yeah, it's yeah. like top five for a lot of different people. Yeah. And like you said, the shelf life. Like somebody could have never watched it. Somebody could have watched it. 10 years ago yeah. and continues to it's watch it? It's still very it's crazy. alive. Recently, this woman came up to me, she just goes, she had a tattoo <laughs> that just said, she looked at me and went, <laughs> didn't even say anything? <laughs> and then walked away. And you're just like, hey. Well, <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh, that's cool, cool tattoo. And she just went and walked away. She was like, you know, touched. Mm. Lovely though. Cool, cool little tattoo. Kind of weird. I'm sure it's interesting for you with the reactions people have when they see you because you've been in all these different things. So how do you deal with that? You know, it's celebrity culture can be a lot to deal with. So are you embracing it? Does it bother you sometimes? How do you deal with it? Celebrity, I don't, I, I call myself an actor. Sure. You know, I'm an actor, uh, celebrity thing. It's, it's such a pop culture mm -hmm. thing. What does it mean? Um, Mick Jagger's a celebrity right. to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I got you. Yeah, you're just doing the, the Beatles, yeah. Paul McCartney, that's a celebrity. Everybody else is, I don't know. Um, but, but it is exciting because I kind of know the audience that, 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 I, that I see. You know, I see some little kids. I go, you watched House Guest and Everybody Hates Chris. And, you know, that's, that's what you watched. And then some middle-aged woman comes up and she goes, I know you from, from, I said, in plain sight? That's right, <laughs> you were the chief. I guess, yep. what, you know. And, of course, you know, uh, College kids come up, and, you know, and they're like, "Man, we know you from uh, Entourage. What else? What else? Right, Did you yeah. watch The Wire? That's it. You were the Greek." So I kind of, I, I sort of play my own game of who's seen what. Which is a know? fun thing for you too, yeah, because you've done some cool stuff. Yeah, guys my age and older, they go, "Man, we know you from. Did you watch Stooges? Did you watch Three Stooges?" Go, oh, yeah, you were Mo. I'm like, because <laughs> I know, you know, grandpas have seen right. all the guys, older, probably usually an older, uh, you know. Yep group have seen that so that's what's fun seeing you know uh, uh you know pinning out my, my own my own uh, audience what was it like playing mo um it was great it was really cool i've, I've i really felt like i think that's when i started going like this because i felt like mo you know chose me mm. i really felt like i was driving around i remember getting that i felt like i, I it was sort of an out-of-body experience i felt like he was talking to me you know mm. you know because um, a lot of guys wanted to do that. Sure, yeah. And why I got deal. it, I got it, I got it, you know. Um, that was exciting. But uh, that was, that was, I'll just say that, yeah. It was, and we went to Australia to shoot it. Oh, wow. That's cool. In Sydney for a couple of months and worked with one of my good friends, Michael Chiklis, was Curly. Evan Handler, I met on that, I believe, and we've worked several times since. John Kassir, but um, that was that was terrific. What can I say? You know, playing a historical figure like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, you want to talk about shelf life? Three Stooges. You know, yeah. all these years later. Unfortunately, something happened at that time. There was a problem with the eras bickering or whatever. So it, it was at the time when VHS was still on the shelves. I heard that they had made a couple hundred thousand VHS tapes to go on the blockbuster shelves, mm. and they were never released. So it didn't have its shelf quote unquote right. shelf life that it should have. Mm. Not a lot of people have seen that. It's really a wonderful biopic. It was also wonderfully reviewed. The Times did a New York Times did a like a five page spread on it. it yeah, it was that was a bit of a, a bummer. Yeah. Bummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there's been a couple. I mean, you mentioned that. You mentioned vinyl ending a little bit early. Like, those are kind of some of the things you have to deal with along the way, it it's, seems like. You wake up every, every you know, you got to, like, try to move on. It's right. hard because yeah. I do think about it sometimes. Ouch, you know, but, you know, but then I, you, what I do is I think about the people around me, mm -hmm. incredible friends and uh, fiancé now that I have. Yeah. If any little job had changed or whatever, your location would have changed, I wouldn't have met this terrific guy, uh, you know, or that guy, or that. If I hadn't done this job, I wouldn't have met Dave Rodriguez, who's a good friend of mm -hmm. mine, and, you know, newer friends past 10 years, John Barr. These guys are both directors now who I've worked with several times. Um, so you kind of just enjoy where you've been because it's taken you, as long as I have cool people around me. Totally. You know, That's I'm, what it's all I'm about. not in jail, I'm yeah. not a drug addict, so <laughs> uh, they've, they've been okay steps. I've made some blunders in the past. I didn't take a few jobs I wish I had, and I was a little bit of a feisty 35-year-old, 40-year-old. What, what do you think the reason was for that? I was just a nutty kid. You gotta mm -hmm. grow up. Right. Some people are smarter, younger, and some people you know, kill themselves and mm -hmm. some people, you know. You go through different phases of life. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, of, you know, as I'm getting old, I'm thinking like, you know, I'm still here. Things are doing okay. Just, right. just, just be happy. Just enjoy Try it. to be happy. Totally. Stop being a miserable, crazy, neurotic <laughs> actor. You are know. There any big ones that you passed up on that you're like, man, I wish I would have done that? Um, the biggest one, which is not huge, mm -hmm. uh, I was I auditioned for Seinfeld, probably my favorite show on TV yeah. ever, like five times, mm -hmm. and they kept bringing me back. I, I think I auditioned for it at least four times, possibly five. Finally, it was, the, I think, coming to the last season, beginning of the last season or the second to last season, they said, okay, we want Paul, uh, we're offering him, you know, a role. I, it was a clown. Mm -hmm. And I, I said, no, no, I don't want to play a freaking clown. <laughs> I played a clown in a weird little dark movie years ago. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of it. Uh, Nick Kazan directed it. But did they know that I'm when sorry. you auditioned for it? Kazan, I'm sorry, I forgot the name of the movie. Anyway, no. So I get the call <laughs> offering... Um, offering the clown part. Offering the clown role. There's a very famous uh, um, uh, uh, episode where there's this psycho clown, not that one. It was, a, it was like a birthday clown. Mm -hmm. I think John Favreau plays the role. Okay. I'm not going to quote that if anybody sees right, that, right. but I'm pretty sure Favreau, they probably call, hey, John, you want to do this? Sure. <laughs> I'll go do it. Right. But you didn't, Whoever got it. Right, I think it was John Favreau. You didn't want to play a clown. I'm not playing a clown. <laughs> not, I just did them by my PD Blue. Yep. I'm a big show, you know, true romance. I'm a tough guy. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not doing that. I did that already. Schmuck. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what an would, idiot. You would have been in the Seinfeld universe. Can I say universe. that on this thing? Yeah, you're good. You're good. You say whatever I want? Yeah. I'll keep it clean. <laughs> you know, that's the one. Right. Not, aside from the fact that it plays, these shows play every day. All the time. You know, globally, yep. interglo intergalactically, everywhere. <laughs> you know. Everybody's seen an episode. You know, so I have a friend, there's a couple of friends that have done Seinfeld. They've done one or two episodes. And it's just, you know, you could buy a house from that. Anyway, the yeah. residual is great. But aside from that, it's the greatest show. It's my favorite show, and I'm not in it. Mm. I could have been the damn clown making kids popping balloons. <laughs> what, who cares? <laughs> Gives you shit, the crap that it, I've done a lot of silly little things. And that's one that I should have done. Why is it your favorite show? It's Seinfeld. It's great, but I, what specifically oh, I don't about know. it? I honestly, I could watch Kramer all day long. Hilarious. That knucklehead. I mean, he the was physical humor of Kramer. He was a genius. Yeah. He was great, and just that was my world. Mm -hmm. Our friends. We used to uh, we used to have little get together dinners, parties. You know, yeah, and, and we had a few like people did Sopranos later on. Mm -hmm. We'd watch Seinfeld. That's it was cool. Just hilarious. It, it was, was great watching. Jason Alexander and, you know, George and Elaine and all the, you know, Newman. <laughs> uh, you know, these, the, I'm not a big TV watcher, but that was right. my, sh that was my show if mm. I had a show. You know, then came Friends, which I wasn't, it was like after. Right, was Seinfeld like, was really the one perfect timing for That was for the one you. for me. And yeah. I, you know, yeah, related to that. So I wanted to be on it, and I didn't. Mm. So I continue how miserable I am from not doing <laughs> Seinfeld. A couple of others, yeah. But that's the big one. That was a big one, yeah. yeah. I gotcha. Yeah. Well, you mentioned before Blockbuster, and obviously Blockbuster is not a factor anymore when it comes to TV and movie watching. Yeah. What are the craziest changes to you when it comes to the TV and film industry? 
Good question. My gosh. I mean, it's it's happening like as we speak. Yeah. Apple, Amazon, Disney, Netflix, yeah. Hulu, Mulu, Disney, fighting wars, takeover. I mean, my God, this is it's nuts. It's really amazing. This yeah. one's opening with forty billion films, and this one's taking that. I heard the other day, Disney is taking all their product and vaulting, putting it in a vault, not letting people see it for a few years. So. You, the audience to them. I mean, it's incredible. I, hey, I'm thrilled to be a part of it. What can I tell you? Yeah, more work for you long, along the way. Yeah, it's exciting. How about the banker coming out with Sam Jackson? That's exciting. Uh, that, you know, wonderful uh, uh, Brad Feinstein is an executive producer, he's done a lot of wonderful projects, and he's, he's uh, put me in a couple of these movies. We met on All Rise and then. Um, Banker, Waldo, something else. I know there was another one in there. Uh, yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot of you the yeah, next couple of years. Yeah, so, so the Banker's terrific. Uh, Sam Jackson and um, Anthony Mackey. Anthony Mackey play these uh, African American real estate moguls back when it wasn't cool to be a black mm. real estate, you know, landlord. Yeah. Uh, back in the fifth, late 50s, early 60s, I think they were buying properties in, you know, the white neighborhood or right on the border. And it's a true story, and it's, uh, I read the script, I said, man, this is great. This is going to be terrific. So um, it's a big opening next Thursday night at a Chinese theater in L.A., and I'm not going to be able to get there because I'm doing this little crazy little thriller with uh, Mickey Rourke and Ice-T and mm -hmm. Peter Green right now. So anyway. But um, looking at this picture, yeah. at beautiful Madison Eisner and Joey Pants, and they are, she is so wonderful to work with. She has such a unique, you know, quality, very angelic quality. You know, I look forward to see where she goes. She's terrific. I mean, this is a fun movie. I'm excited. I just wanted to talk about it because it's opening Friday. Friday's a big day. Yeah. It's a big day, and I don't want to miss out on talking about this. Lynn Cohn, the, the wonderful... Lynn Cohn is in this playing an old grandma, and uh, it was just a blast. Wonderful story. It takes place in this little town in West Virginia where, where and we shot it in uh, Rob Tunnell, who directed it. Who it's from a, a, a graphic novel he mm -hmm. wrote in the mid, mid two thousand five, I think. We shot it in his grandfather's house. Oh wow! And it's a and it's it's it's, it's he's just bringing his life, his past life to life in this home. The house hasn't been remodeled, retouched, anything wow. since probably the 60s. So it's like uh, we went back in time into this house, and I play his grandfather, I think, from years ago. But these guys would wake up, walk down the block, go down some shaft, 700 feet, and mine coal mm. All for day. 40, 50 years. Yeah. That's what these guys did. And the coal would come up, and you know they'd generate electricity and in Pittsburgh steel they'd make steel and these were the real you know blue collar workers of this country that that I was you know a part of for a couple of months working on this it was it's an incredible incredible environment the story uh, is so authentic and festive and it's a wonderful little you know romantic comedy for the for the for the holidays and I go see it go yeah. see Feast of the Seven Fishes but that's that's exciting yeah but yeah bankers coming out a bunch of good stuff awesome Paul, really nice to meet All you. All right, man. Thanks so much. Check him out Friday. Feast of Seven Fishes for PBV. I'm DJ. PBV. See you next time. Thanks, DJ.